So as we begin to review the specific powers and duties of Congress, you begin to see there's some overlap since we've already talked about the executive branch. A lot of these things we've already covered. So hopefully the things on this list, like you can remember or you just know uh, the general review. You're gonna have to keep track of which part of Congress, House or Senate, or maybe both are responsible for the power. And then is there a specific number of them that have to agree to accomplish that? So we've already talked about economic responsibilities of Congress. Um, Congress is responsible for proposing the budget and then the president signs it in the law. The other thing that Congress is responsible to do, despite the fact that presidents, when they get elected, say like, I'm not gonna raise taxes, that's Congress's job. They pass laws, either raise or lower taxes. By the Congress's own rules, all tax bills have to first be proposed in the House of Reps. And this is because the House has always been directly elected by the people. And for the early portion of our country's history, senators were appointed. So uh, initial members of Congress were a little hesitant to have the Senate be proposing tax bills because they weren't elected by the people and they could claim no taxation without representation. So even though today both are directly elected by the people, by tradition, um, tax bills have to begin in the House first. Um, we've already talked about de declaring war. A declaration of war comes from Congress and you need a majority of both the House of Reps and the Senate to declare war. And we talked about the War Powers Resolution. This was a law passed in 1973 that attempted to limit um, the ability of the president to go into military action without getting this declaration of war. Um, the House of Representatives has electoral responsibilities. So in a presidential election, it's not good enough to get more electoral votes than your opponent. You have to get a majority. And if no candidate gets a majority, the House of Representatives makes a decision. A majority vote would be needed um, to support a candidate and then that person would be elected. This has only happened twice in our country's history, 1800 and 1824. Congress also has judicial responsibilities, like court-like responsibilities. And this is primarily through impeachment. Um, the House of Reps has the ability to impeach or accuse presidents of wrongdoing. That's all impeachment is, is the House of Representatives taking a vote and if a majority of them agree, a president is formally accused of doing something wrong, then it just means they have to have a trial. This has only happened three times in our country's history. Andrew Johnson was impeached in 1864, Bill Clinton in 1998, and obviously you remember Donald Trump was impeached in 2019. Um, that just means they have to have a trial. The Senate is then responsible for holding the trial. Uh, the senators each become jurors, the chief justice of the United States becomes uh, the judge that presides over the trial, and that works like a regular trial. Two thirds of the senators have to agree to convict the president that's been impeached, um, and that's never happened. Um, we've never actually, we've had three presidents be impeached, but none of them have been found guilty in their trial, including President Trump. Senate is responsible for confirming all presidential appointments. So president, uh, presidents appoint cabinet members and ambassadors. Um, all of them have to be approved by the Senate, Supreme Court justices too, uh, through a majority vote. The Senate is required to approve all formal treaties. So president and his advisors can make treaties with foreign countries, but the Senate has to approve them and that requires a two thirds agreement of the Senate. And the last one is investigation and oversight. Congress is responsible for overseeing all of those bureaucratic agencies that we talked about. Remember, Congress possesses subpoena power, meaning that they can force people to testify before them. Um, and when you testify before Congress, um, essentially it's like testifying in a court of law that you must take an oath of honesty. And if it can be proven that you lied while testifying to Congress, just like if you lied during a trial, you can be charged and convicted of committing perjury. So these are the basic powers that we've already talked about in one form or another. Um, and this is sort of just a general review.